Hi, I'm Joanne Rader, and I'm excited to share some great ideas about bathing with you. Any direct caregiver that has bathed people with dementia knows that it can be a very distressing experience for you and the resident, and sometimes it is dangerous. During such a bath or shower, the person will sometimes hit, struggle with the caregiver, or even bite. Don't bite. At other times, the person may yell. Sometimes they'll refuse to go near the bath or shower. I ain't gonna get in that mess. And at other times, the person will allow himself to be bathed, but clearly is miserable. <laughs> Surveys show that as much as half of nursing home residents get distressed during bathing. Wouldn't it be nice if there were some simple, practical ways to make that different? Well, I'm here to tell you that there are. We're going to share them on this video. Now, what you might be thinking right now, if you're a CNA, is, wait a minute. What new is there to tell me about bathing? I've been doing it for years. Or you could be asking, a nurse teaching me about bathing? They don't even do it. But don't fall asleep and don't tune this out because the things we're going to share with you come from direct caregivers just like you. Most caregivers know a lot about bathing and have a lot of experience. Over the last 10 years, we've gathered together a lot of that information and added some new ones that we discovered. The interventions that we're going to share with you are good for the residents, but just as important, they're also good for you. They can make your work easier and more enjoyable. We call this making bathing person-centered rather than task-centered. Let's start with you. What if you were to get a shower in your nursing home? How would you feel about that? Would you want to do it? Why not? You don't want to roll down the hall in that lovely shower chair? Well, when I ask people how they'd feel about that, they say things like, well, it would be embarrassing. I don't want anybody to see me naked. It's cold. It's painful and uncomfortable. It's not private. Or they'll say, I just had a shower this morning. I don't need one. That's exactly what our nursing home residents tell us when they're being invited to take a shower. Think about your last pleasant bath or shower in your own home. How is it different? How would it compare to the experience of the person that you bathe? It's not the same at all, is it? Bathing should be pleasant or at least tolerable for residents, just as it is for us. In this program, we'll be showing you a number of real-life situations. We've blurred the features of the residents and the staff to preserve privacy and dignity and obtained written consent for the use of these videos for educational purposes. Let's take a look at an actual case. In this video, the person doesn't want to be bathed, but the caregiver insists. But I don't want no shower because I don't like them things. You don't? No. Well, we're not going to take that long to have to give you a shower. No, you don't have to. You're a damn lie. You don't have to well, give you a shower. The person goes along, but as the shower proceeds, she gets more and more upset. The caregivers are doing the best job they can in a difficult situation when suddenly the situation turns more violent. The caregiver that was not bitten struggles to finish the shower. But watch what happens next. Experiences like this are exhausting and dangerous for all involved. And the caregiver was just trying to do her job. This is the kind of situation that we're working to change. The nursing assistants in this clip were not doing a bad job. They did not have the tools, the instruction, and the permission to do it in a different way. And it's that way all over. Currently, 
Many people think that this type of forced bathing is required or necessary to keep people clean and healthy. Yet, there's no solid evidence to support this practice, and now we've learned that forced bathing does not have to happen. There are ways to keep people clean without a battle, and they involve putting the person before the task of bathing, getting to know the person, better communication, and flexibility in when, where, how, and how often people are bathed, and having a variety of techniques that you can use to provide a pleasant experience. Here is the same resident being showered after one of the CNAs we just saw had adapted her approach to meet this person's special needs. Watch for what's different. We won't give you a bath, we'll give you just a wash up. Yeah, that'll be all right with me. Okay. Yeah, do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put this over you so you can be warm in the hallway. All right. Till we get up there to clean you up. All right. Just get always been this period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've done a good job. Miss Fassie, what church you go to? Rock, Raymond, 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 here are a few of the things that the aide now does. She reassures the person that she'll be covered and warm and she does it. She talks with her about things that she knows the person is interested in, such as her church. She gives her a sense of control by asking if she can remove her gown. And also notice that this shower only required one aide to do it. If the person had resisted having her gown removed, the aide could have left it on and rinsed around it or used a no-rinse soap. Now let's look at another technique we used with the same resident, this time bathing her in bed using a large towel moistened with a no-rinse soap product, sort of like covering her with a giant washcloth, and again, keeping her covered and warm and in control. We call this a towel bath, and later we'll show you exactly how to do it. But for now, let's look at how it went, and remember, this is the same person that we saw previously. Can I wash your face? Yes, sir. Okay. I was taking the glasses. Is my glasses all? Yes, ma'am. You know you got the prettiest skin. Yes, ma'am. Ooh, yeah. I said that towel is really wet, ain't it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, it is. I said it feels good, but it sure is wet. Mm -hmm. She said yes, ma'am. That's a wet towel. I said yeah, you massage like this right here. Don't that feel good? Yes, it does. She said ooh, it, yes, sir. That feels so good. on mm -hmm. what to do. Ooh, ooh. Thank you, ma'am. Right then. You about clean the front. I got to wash the back. She said, well, I sure do appreciate what you all are doing. Yes, ma'am. I said, I appreciate it. I have to say that because I ain't got no money. Oh, we don't charge anything. Uh, wow. Did you see how she went from cursing, grabbing, and biting to thanking the CNA and offering to pay for the service? How much better both must feel. The person is dignified and has a good experience, and the aide does her job without feeling endangered. And how do we go from here to there? The first step to making bathing better is to understand what goes wrong. Often it's because people being bathed feel bad during the experience. They're embarrassed or cold. Painful things happen. They become afraid or they feel a complete loss of control. How staff communicate with residents before and during the bathing process is really important. You saw in an earlier video clip that when the aide used the word bath, the resident said she didn't want a bath. And then the CNA skillfully said, well, we won't give you a bath, we'll give you a wash up. And then that was fine with the resident. Other important communication points include, let them know what you're going to do before you do it, because saying nothing is not helpful and then sincerely apologize if they complain. Talk with them, get a conversation going. Know the likes and dislikes of the person and use them to facilitate care. It's a matter of your being able to tailor the way you wash people to meet their special needs and wishes. 
The first thing that CNAs and nurses ask me when I tell them about this is how much longer will all this take? Well, we've researched this and found that individualized bathing does not take significantly more time. But let's listen to what one CNA, Beth Parker, who implemented these approaches, had to say. Actually, for the most part, it can actually take less time. Uh, the resident is more comfortable, uh, they're not as resistive, and we're able to provide hygiene usually much more efficiently. Another important question you might be asking is, what will the surveyor say? Well, you know, there are no regulations that dictate that someone has to get into a shower or a tub. It just says that we're responsible to meet their hygiene needs. There's also nothing in the regulations about the number of times per week that a person is to get a shower or a tub bath. In fact, this material was presented to surveyors on a teleconference with the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, an organization which oversees all surveyors. Regulations do specify that all care needs to be adapted for individual needs and surveyors are now beginning to issue citations when they see that this doesn't happen in bathing situations. Now let's look in detail at what you can do. It's important to think of the shower not as a task to be done, but as an activity occurring as part of a relationship. So when someone resists or gets upset, try to understand the meaning of that behavior. Address issues of cold, pain, need to feel in control. Work to make it a pleasurable activity for you both so it's a win-win situation. Let's look at a typical shower. Help! It's going to be a little warm, okay? Help! Help! Generally, the shower starts at the top and works down with the person uncovered and cold throughout the process. However, having water on the face and the head is one of the most distressing parts of the shower for people with dementia. Plus, the person is usually sitting on a very cold and uncomfortable shower chair. So how can we make it more pleasant? Well, first of all, we can make the shower chair more comfortable. Let me show you how. One of the things that goes wrong in the shower is the shower chair itself. It's pretty uncomfortable. It doesn't have any padding and the seat's big. So let me have someone come in and sit on it and just give us their opinion on it. Hi. This is Anne Louise Barrick and she's going to tell us what this chair feels like to her. It's really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's hurting my back. Your back. Mm -hmm. And. I think my seat is going to fall through. It's the weirdest feeling. You're kind of like falling yeah. through the hole. Uh huh. That's mm -hmm. what it really feels like. And um, my feet are dangling too. Mm, yeah, just kind of hanging there. Yeah. I wouldn't want to take a shower in this chair. Does it feel like you're kind of falling out? It feels like I'm falling out. Yeah, I'm moving forward. Yeah. Okay, well, you know what? I think we can fix this. All right. One of the first things you want to do is look at padding the seat, and there's a number of ways to do that. One way would be to take some washcloths and drape them over the seat, or you can do it with a towel and wrap a towel around. You just place that towel in the place that was most important for where the person might be experiencing pain. Or the last thing that you can do for padding the seat is to take something like this, which is just a simple child's potty seat insert that's padded, and just put it into the hole in the chair, like that. You can also pad the back of the chair. Here I have some uh, pipe insulation. It's a closed cell foam, and you just slide it over the back like this. You could put it on the arms also. But because this chair also has this difficult um, nylon that's rough on the skin, you might want to take a towel and just put it over the back. I'm sure many of you already do that. But the one last thing we had to deal with is that she was complaining that her feet were dangling. And one of the things you can do is to take a very simple basin that you have in, around in the care facility, turn it over, and use it as a footstool. So now let's invite Ann Louise to come back and try it with these modifications.
Now, how's that? Oh, that's a lot better. It's a lot better. Mm -hmm. Feels more comfortable. Uh -huh. But I still don't want to shower. That's okay. We've got some alternatives. Next, it's a very simple and humane thing to do to cover the person with towels during the shower. You can also use conversation or things to hold for distraction, and this can be valuable. Say what you're going to do and thank the person when things go well. If the shower spray is uncomfortable, consider using a washcloth or perhaps a no-rinse soap. Here's the same woman being showered using some of these principles. All right, so now I'm gonna lift this side up, okay? I'm gonna lift this side up and keep you covered, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. I gotta keep you with her. All right, I'm gonna lift this side up, okay? I'm gonna get this on. All right. Yeah. All right. You doing wonderful this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Talk. Thank you. You're doing good for me. As you can see, this person is now enjoying, or at least tolerating, the shower. She's covered and warm, the caregiver's talking with her, telling her what she's going to do, and the pace is slow and gentle. Here's another example of a shower that uses some of the same principles to create a pleasant experience. Yeah. Is that better? that feel a little bit better? Mm -hmm. I don't want it to hurt your leg, your foot. Many residents are frightened by the tubs in long-term care facilities. For Christ's sake, why don't you want me to live? I do want you to live. But well, why can't I have what I want to have then? They find the tubs with lifts unfamiliar and frightening. One person, being lowered into her tub, asked why someone was putting her in a hog boiling tank. What else gives people a negative impression? To begin with, look around. What does your tub room look like? Does it look like this when you walk in? Here are some simple things that we did to make it more inviting. Here's another tub room before we remodeled it. And here's what it looked like after it was remodeled. Notice how it looks much more familiar and friendly, even though there's an unfamiliar tub in the room. As with showering, if you change your approach to tub bathing to improve comfort, privacy, and a sense of connection, it'll make a big difference. Keep the person covered and warm. Reassure them. Move slowly. Consider using a no-rinse soap in the tub if you need to make the process quicker and simpler. If the person remains fearful and resistive, try a different method. Here's the same woman you saw fighting and struggling in the lift, being much more cooperative when she's given a shower and encouraged to help herself. Some people, no matter how you try to adapt the shower or tub, will still be uncomfortable. For them, bathing in the room is a good option to explore. Bathing in the bed works well for people who are hard to move because of sickness, pain on movement, or obesity. Bed bathing is also helpful for people who get upset or afraid of the shower or the tub. And some people just prefer this method of bathing. I'm sure that you already know how to do a typical bed bath using basins of water. What we would like to share with you is a pleasant alternative that's quick and keeps people warm and covered throughout. It's called a towel bath, and it's simple, practical, and easy once you get used to it. The next few clips show CNAs getting the person ready, setting up the equipment, and completing the towel bath. I'm just going to slip your gown off of you. Okay. Are you awake yet? Okay. I'm going to cover you up while I get your 
your towel nice and warm for you. Okay? I'll be back in just a few moments. Notice how the nursing assistant loosened the clothes and got the person ready to be washed, and then assured that she was warm before she left to get her equipment. Next, we'll see how to set up the equipment. The equipment that you need to do the towel bath is pretty basic and easy to obtain. You're going to need a graduate, one that will fit underneath the faucets on your sink, a no-rinse soap, a small medication cup to measure the no-rinse soap, a plastic bag. Into the bottom of that plastic bag you're going to want to place a couple of washcloths, perhaps a hand towel, and then you're going to have your bath sheet that has been fan folded like an accordion fold and place that on top All right, then you're going to turn on the water. You want it warm, um, 100 to 110 degrees, so it feels warm on your wrist. And you want to fill your graduate. We found that it takes um, a liter to two liters, maybe a little bit more to get everything universally moist. You don't want it, it's, it's as though you had taken a washcloth and gotten it wet and wrung it out really good. And you're going to use an ounce of the no rinse soap and put just part of it in the graduate after you put in the water. If you put it in before you're going to have a lot of sud. And then starting down at the bottom of your where your washcloths and towel are just start pouring the water over it. You just want to get a uniform amount of water over all of it so it's damp. After you've massaged it thoroughly for a little bit you want to feel inside just to make sure that everything is uniformly damp and then you can close the top and take it to the resident ready for the towel bath. Now you're ready to give the towel bath. Let's watch how one CNA does it. First, the caregiver explains what he's going to do. You're going to put the most towel on. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, he gently and gradually works the large, warm, moist towel underneath the dry blanket so the person stays covered all of the time. You're welcome, honey. Next, the caregiver starts washing the part of the body that is least distressing. In this case, it's the feet. You want to start it with your feet? Okay, I'll be better. He continues washing the body by massaging gently through the towel. Think of the towel as a giant washcloth. Doing your legs now. Notice how he uses one of the washcloths from the bag to clean the peri area. I'm going to clean between your legs now, okay? Just relax. Okay. In the next clip, the caregiver turns the person on one side and places a smaller warm towel from the plastic bag on the back, washing in a similar manner. Then he uses a washcloth from the plastic bag to wash the buttocks and the rectum. Oh, you happen to me. Yeah, I'm happy to me. Wait a bye. You're doing good, too. You're doing great. I ain't got no money left now. Mm -hmm. Finally, he removes the wet towel, making sure the person remains warm and covered. No rinsing or drying is required. I'm going to put something dry, another blanket, a dry blanket on you. Mm 
cold. Yeah, I'm taking the cold stuff out now. He's done. At this time, you can let the person rest comfortably for a brief time, or you can get them dressed. If you've raised the bed, be sure to lower it back down to the best height for the resident before you leave the room. Keep in mind that this person had been very difficult and resistive in the shower. However, what we see is a woman who feels warm, in control, and respected throughout the process and she thanks him numerous times for helping her. Here are a few additional tips on the towel bath technique. To wash under the legs, have the person bend their knee. This gives you access to the underside of the leg and the inner thigh. And remember that like the shower, there is not just one way to do it. Earlier you saw the aide putting on the moist towel starting at the feet. Here he did it side to side. You can adapt it for what's comfortable for you and the resident. Once you're familiar with the technique of the towel bath and you have the supplies handy, this method is as quick or quicker than a tub bath or a shower. People often ask, does no rinse soap really get people clean? And they wonder if we have to give a real bath, at least sometimes. Actually, no rinse soap works in a different way than regular soap. Once diluted, no additional water is needed. It dissolves dirt so it can be wiped off. Our research shows that no rinse soap gets people just as clean as traditional soap and water, and it's easier on the skin. We've used no rinse soap exclusively for as long as three years without any other type of bathing, and people have continued to smell good and their skin has remained healthy. Here are some examples of no rinse products. These pre-moistened towels can be heated in the microwave. Use a different towel for each part of the body. Here are two examples of other no rinse products. One has an oil base, the other is foaming. And here we have a shampoo in the cap. You microwave it, put it on the person's head, and massage. No rinsing. Hair washing poses a special challenge. Let's look at a couple of clips. I've got a warm washcloth I'm going to put on your head. Oh, don't put that up there. Get it off. Okay, I'll hurry, Maudie. You're doing okay. I'll hurry. I didn't intend for you to do that. I know. I don't it. like it. I know you don't. <laughs> Even when hair washing is done very carefully, as in this next clip, it can be frightening. Maudie, the very last thing I have to do is rinse the soap out of your hair. I'm oh. going to hold a washcloth up there. Oh. Okay. Wow, it's hot. Oh. 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 Okay, Maudie. Oh, don't do rinse it. rinse it a little bit more. Oh. Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. It's cold. Now it's cold. It's cold. We're almost done, Miss Maudie. Almost done. I'm trying to hurry. Oh. 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 oh it's, it is good. It goes back in my ears. Oh. Hold the towel there. Oh, I can't. We're almost done, Maudie. I can't. Oh, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Oh. One more time and we're oh, done. Oh, it's hot. I know. Let's face it. Hair washing is hard. After all, the nursing assistant in the last clip was doing a lot to make the person more comfortable. She did the hair last, so the head would not be cold for the rest of the shower. She partially covered the person for warmth. She used a washcloth to soften the shower spray, and she deflected the water from the woman's face. These strategies are often enough to make hair washing go well, but they weren't enough for this person. Watch how this CNA made the situation better. We got this side just about all done, Lonnie. Uh, your hair curls up so nice when it's wet, Maudie. Well, you don't have to have it so deep. I say it curls up pretty. You got pretty curls in your hair.
Well, they're mine. Yes, they are. Every last one of them, Maudie. Here, the CNA decided to separate hair washing from the shower. She knows this resident is easily overwhelmed by care routines because of her pain, sensitivity to cold, fatigue, and dementia. So she washes her hair in the beauty parlor. The resident is fully dressed and warm. The CNA uses a plastic bag and a towel around her neck to keep her clothes dry. Using washcloths and a basin of water, she washes and rinses the person's hair, being careful to keep water out of her eyes and ears. Another option is to wash the hair while the person is lying flat in bed using an inflatable basin. Or you can simply create a basin in the bed by using a plastic bag and some towels. If the person truly dislikes getting their hair washed no matter what you try, think about doing it only as often as is necessary. Thus, hair washing, just like the rest of bathing, needs to be adjusted to the person's needs and wishes. And what would happen if you make these bathing changes? Well, first, you could expect to see a real decrease in resident complaints, resistance, and defensive behaviors such as hitting, grabbing, and biting. Here is Beth again, describing how things changed for her and the residents that she cares for. When you have to continually do, do something to someone that they find unpleasant and often frightening and terrifying, then you have to kind of harden your heart. And since we've been, any, since we've been able to individualize bathing care plans, um, you can really allow yourself to really care more for the residents in, in every aspect. The work environment is a lot more pleasant place to work now. Um, there's a lot more laughter. The residents are more relaxed um, because they're not feeling intimidated and threatened by the staff. And so they're a lot more relaxed. And we have, um, um, it's really given us a, a wider focus of truly individualizing care in every aspect of their life. Um, we have some residents who are up all night. So that's when their hygiene is provided and that's when their meals are given. This facility found it safe, practical, and better to move away from the rigid two showers a week, if you like it or not, routine to create personalized and pleasant experiences for their residents and the staff. Because running water may frighten many people with dementia, they often use no-rinse methods of bathing, whether that's in the room, the shower, or the tub. To make this happen, administration must consistently support the message that change is needed and expected and provide support and supplies that the direct care staff need. This includes giving a clear message to reluctant staff that they are expected to work towards change or leave that old methods of forced bathing are no longer acceptable. Direct care staff need education and support to learn and practice the new techniques. It takes a little practice using some of the new tub and no rinse techniques. Consistent assignments are an important part of individualizing bathing. If staff have to rotate between groups of residents or units, it's much harder for them to get to know the person and adapt care. A supportive supervising nurse is critical. Care staff can't implement these changes if the charge nurse sees showers as the best way to keep people clean and feels justified in forcing people to do it. Caregivers consistently give us the message that this is the reason that they can't adapt their methods of bathing. In the next few clips, we hear from staff at Beth's facility, Marion Estates in Sublimity, Oregon about their experiences in implementing person-centered bathing. Let's listen to what Beth has to say to me about her supportive nurse supervisor. Um, on our units, we're very fortunate to have really good teamwork. All of the caregivers have good communication. We're able to discuss um, things that we have found that work well. We have the support of all of our nurses and administration also. We have consistent assignments, which is a very positive thing. We are able to really get to know the residents, and we're able to develop a trusting relationship with them, and they are able to trust us. And in long term, when um, we also have the flexibility that if the resident is 
because of the consistent assignments, if we feel that they're not able to have their bath done that day, um, then we are, we, and if they're saying no, then we can wait, we can do that another time, and that comes from having our nurses support us. Um, they realize that we're going, to, we're going to do what's best for the residents, and they give us that ability. Here is how that nurse, Donna Bullock, describes her role. All of the residents on our units have dementia. We believe that they still have the right to make choices and say no if they don't want a bath. However, the CNAs are very good at coming up with ways to keep them clean and to wash them up that they can tolerate. They consult with me and we come up with a plan for bathing. Um, as a nurse, it's my job to make sure that I support them and that I have the tools uh, available for them to use. We purchased some no rinse soap for our program that was not a good soap, was not appropriate for the residents. The CNAs came to me and said could we please have this other kind that's much better. So I went to administration and they purchased the soap and we are now using that brand of soap. Donna also had this to say when she was asked if she saw an impact from the bathing changes. Yes, there was. Our agitation level went down. Our behaviors were less. It took less staff time because we didn't have the behaviors. April Diaz, the director of nursing, had this to say. Well, when we saw the success of using individualized bathing with our Alzheimer's residents, we began to look at how we can incorporate that throughout the rest of the building. Um, so we began to look at the basic level, which was the training level of how to do bathing and um, looked at our CNA class curriculum. We um, incorporated Beth as one of our primary CNAs from the Alzheimer's units in teaching the CNAs in the class on how to bathe. And that's all based on individualized practice, um, which is not necessarily the showers. So we began to work with the nurses using Donna as the primary um, resident RN care manager from the Alzheimer unit to work with the other RN care managers and the nurses in incorporating this thought process um, and to be supportive to those CNAs that were coming out of the class. Um, we also started working with families and educating them on the bathing um, technique and meeting the individualized need. Family education is also important. If you feel the person is no longer comfortable in the shower or the tub, someone needs to explain to the family that a new and improved care plan has been implemented. Show them this tape. Focus the discussion on what you are doing for the person rather than what you're not doing. Explain the problems and the benefits. A big question is always about cost. And here's what the administrator, Steve Austin, had to say. The costs in, involved in this change were very minimal. What we did was we purchased some supplies like the bath blankets. Uh, we used a, a new product, you know, for the residents. But anybody that does any bed bath um, situation basically has the same, you know, cost for the supplies. Probably the, the only difference or the only cost that really was associated was the training cost. You know, teaching everybody how to do this takes a little extra labor. Uh, but even c considering, the labor was pretty minimal if you look at the outcomes to the residents. So, It is true. These changes are practical and economical. However, it does require an administrative commitment and a change of attitude and beliefs to put this into practice. Since this video and accompanying CD-ROM is being sent to every nursing home and state surveyor, ombudsman, and Alzheimer's Association agencies, this will soon be the expected standard of practice. It is important that you and your staff update your care related to bathing. Again, from the resident's perspective, forced bathing is frightening and abusive. It is unethical to continue our current approaches when safe and practical alternatives exist. To summarize, bathing should be pleasurable for people in care settings just as it is for us. If it's not pleasurable, staff need to adapt. Forced bathing is no longer acceptable practice. Instead, we need to improve the situation by assessing why there is resistance and finding out what the person needs. We can then apply all our knowledge and skill to create a unique, person-centered bathing plan. 
This video has shown how actual nursing home staff and residents benefited from changing the way people are kept clean. We hope that it is useful to you. It has been my privilege and honor to share this information with you. I sincerely hope that you find it useful and fun. Thank you for all your good work. And I wish you and the people you care for happy bathing.